In today's video, we are going to talk about how we can scrap Amazon reviews. And I decided to create this video because I see the same job posted on multiple freelancing sites again and again. So we'll write the script once and that you can reuse later. So the product URL is typically like this. It's a long URL. So what matters is actually this ASIN number. This is typically in this product information. So this is the number and this number is also in this URL. So actually you can strip down everything else. Just leave slash DP and this ASIN number. And you can actually construct this short URL for the same product page. Similarly, the product reviews have this a short form. So the longer URL looks like this, but you can remove everything else and just keep amazon.com slash product dash reviews and this ASIN. So let's start writing the spider. So let's open the command prompt and let's create a project. So scrappy start project and let's give this a name Amazon. Okay, so now we need to CD into Amazon and then generate the spider. Let me clear this. So scrappy gen spider and then the name. So let's call it reviews. And then the fourth parameter is going to be the start URL. So I'm just putting X because I'm okay. I made a typo. So I put X because I just want to remove everything and rewrite my code. Okay, so I'm opening this complete folder in Visual Studio Code. So of course you can use any code editor that you want to use. Now we have the typical scrappy project structure. If you are not really familiar and comfortable with scrappy structure, the only two files that are important for this particular project is this spider. So this is the empty spider that has been generated and this settings.py file. So we will be providing some settings, right? So let's start with the spider. So let me make everything bigger clearer. Now I'm going to remove this allow domain and start URLs. So this is the fourth parameter that we put here. So I'm going to remove everything. And now what we are going to do is we are going to take this URL. All right. So I'm going to put it outside the class. So this is reviews URL. The change that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this ASIN number and leave this bracket, the curly braces here. And I will put this ASIN numbers in a different variable and I'm actually creating a list. So why I'm creating a list instead of a string variable? So that we can provide multiple ASIN numbers and just get all the reviews in one go. Now what we are going to do is instead of those start URLs, we are going to make use of start request functions. And here we will be running a loop on this list. Okay. So we will run a loop for SIN in as in list. And what we are going to do is we are going to create one URL. And how do we create this URL? So we'll take this reviews URL. Let's use the format method. So now that we have it, we can simply yield scrappy dot request and just send in this URL simple. So we don't need to provide a callback because the default callback is anyway going to be parse. And let's just print something like I am in resp, I am in parse. Okay, so I'm not returning anything. I just want to show you what happens if you don't send the headers. Okay, so let's go to the command prompt, clear everything. So always run scrappy list as the first command, even if you have only one spider. It will give you any errors if you have made any typos or anything. It will give you simply the results. 
Now we are using the crawl method because our spider is part of the project. So simply run this and let's see what we have. So we have a huge log and if you are new to the scrappy world then this may seem little daunting but it gives us very important information. Let's try to figure this out. So the crawling starts from here. So here the first thing it is going to do is it's going to look for robots.txt and the result is 200. Now why it is important? This means that we are respecting the crawling rules. So we should never crawl the pages which are not allowed by robots.txt and Scrappy will take care of it. So this is good. Now we are trying to get this particular page and it failed with an error 503. So you may get errors in 500 range or 400 range if you are not sending the correct headers. So this time we are going to send the correct headers. Now where do we get these headers from? So let's open the page and press F12. In fact, if you do this in incognito window, it will be even better. So this is like opening the page for the first time and we have a lot of things but right now we are only interested in the first one because that is what contains our actual response. So this contains all the reviews and let's look at the request headers, not the response headers, request headers. So there are a lot of request headers which are being sent. So you can ignore the ones which start with colon. So from here to here, these are the headers that you should be sending. Usually if you just send user agent, that should be sufficient. So typically I recommend that you send all the headers. So I'm just going to press control C and now let's come to the code and this is where we need to create a headers variable so instead of writing this headers here in this spider i'm going to settings all right now in settings if we scroll down and let's in fact uh, look for default so this is the one a default request headers so this is the setting that we need to pass and if we just copy this here and paste it here and let me delete everything else so that it is readable. And right now this is set to true. We can set it to false and it will not go and look for robots.txt. So what we want is we want to get all this text which is right here. So let me put this in triple quoted string. So we have this huge thing and we want to convert this into a dictionary because default request header will take a dictionary. So how do you do that? So just to make things easier, just download this package. So this is Scrapper Helper and you can simply install it using pip install Scrapper Helper. And yes, this is one of the package that I have published which contains lot of helper functions. Let me import this first. So import Scrapper Helper as sh. Now remember that settings.py is actually just a regular python file so if you write any python code it will execute. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call sh.getDict this method and this will anyway take this whole string and let's close this and what it will do is it will convert this whole string that we have copied directly from the browser and it will create a dictionary. So now these headers will be sent with every request. So that's the purpose of default request headers. So once we have this in place, let's go back to command prompt, clear everything and let's see what we get now. So now we have this print statement I'm in parse and we can see that for the product page, we have a success message. So 200 is the success. And because we turned off that robot, we don't see that request to robots page. So now let's move on to the next part, which is actually extracting the reviews. So let's go back to the page and try to understand how the page is structured. So these are the reviews. 
this top positive review and top critical review this we can ignore for now because we are going to scrap all the reviews anyway so what we need to do is we need to find a selector which contains the complete review okay so let's make use of the selector tool yes this looks like one so this div id in fact even this one so these are all the reviews so the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a selector which can give us all these reviews and only the reviews and then we will run a loop over all these reviews so right now if i look at this particular attribute this data hook equals review this looks like a good candidate so i'm going to press ctrl f and i'm going to write in this attribute and we can use either xpath or css selector doesn't matter so here if we just write it in square brackets so we are creating a selector css selector and we can see that we have exactly 10 reviews so let's check all the reviews it's important to check the first and last so all looks good so let's take this and come to our code now here what we are going to do is we are going to run a loop so for review in response.css and let's paste in this and i'm not going to call get or get all the reason is i'm going to chain the reviews so what is the purpose of chaining so let me show you let's create a selector and then it will be easier to explain so this is the title of the review now you can see that there are 12 so there are 12 because it is including the top ones also here you can see so this title this title and the 10 which are inside this so we cannot use this directly we have to actually use both of these selectors right so we have to use a selector like this so this will give us all the titles which are inside the main container right so as i said earlier we don't want these two top ones so what we are doing here is we are writing two selectors so uh, we can write these selectors in two ways so let me show you just consider this as a scratch pad so we can write this selector like this response.css something like this and then we can write get all so we can write the selector like this or what we can do is we can break this here and this will do exactly the same thing so now this is called chaining the selector and the good thing is you can actually change css and xpath selector so we have taken the parent so these are some quick selectors that i created earlier so you can get the profile name the stars title and the actual review and finally what you can do is you can yield this item now here you will notice that i used xpath why i used xpath because this review body contains lot of empty spaces tabs and all new line characters so i like this normalize space function of xpath this is inbuilt and works very well so i used xpath here and there is one more reason i use this i use this to explain that you can use css and xpath together it doesn't matter so here we are using response.css and then we are using xpath so it is the the actual selector which is getting created is response.css this part dot xpath this part so we are actually mixing up css and xpath and this is perfectly fine they are going to translate into xpath anyway so let's format and run the spider and very quickly we can see that 10 items were scrapped and we have all the reviews the name of the reviewer the stars the title and the complete review
So if you want, you can get more text. You can you just have to create selectors. Now the next part which is remaining is getting the next link. So next link is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is create a selector for this next page. And how do you create a selector for this next page? Let's uh, have a look. So here, this class is a last, which is not very reliable. It doesn't, it may take you to the next page or to the last page. So instead of that, what we will do is we will look for this text next page and we will find the element which contains this text. Okay, so here I'm going to use XPath. You can use CSS as well, doesn't matter. So what we are going to do is we are going to write this contains method here. I'm going to zoom in so that you can read exactly what I'm doing. So slash slash anchor tag, this contains method from XPath or in fact, we can directly call the text method and look for this. So we have only one selection. So it will look for the anchor tag which contains the next page. And then we can extract the href. So this will give us the next page URL. But this is a relative URL. So we need to convert it into an absolute URL. So outside the for loop, let's write this. The next page is going to be response.xpath. So this is the selector. And get. Now we will check if next page is there or not. On the last page, this next page will not have anything. So it will be none. So it will be a conditional. So now we are going to yield scrappy dot request and remember to use response dot URL join function. So this will convert the relative URLs into absolute URLs. And next, now again, the default callback is parse and that is what we want. So we don't have to provide the callback method specifically. So this code will execute only if there is a next page can actually output this to a CSV file for example and it will keep on running and it will get all the reviews that we want. If you face a problem then what you can do is you can do one more thing go to settings and put one setting here auto throttle enabled equals so if you set auto throttle enabled equal to true, it will introduce random delays between the request. The reviews are running, it will create the CSV file. If I stop it right now, so we can see that uh, 520 reviews have been already scrapped. And let's look at what we have. So this is the CSV file and it contains all the reviews. So that's all. I hope you found it useful. Until next time, see you.